Hey there, YouTube. Shady Builds Garage here. And what we're going to do is we're going to do a quick review, while I have it, of this Eton Viper 90 uh, Kids Quad. Um, a friend of mine dropped this off to try to get fixed. Um, it had been sitting for quite some time. Doesn't have a lot of use on it, as you can tell. I mean, it even still has the little plastic doohickeys on the shocks. It wasn't used hard. It wasn't used a lot, but it didn't work. Um, you know, standard things. Clean the carburetor. But the one thing I noticed on this when I started looking at it and, you know, with all off-brand quads, they use a lot of products made in third world countries. This Viper is actually built in Taiwan. It seems a little better than some of the off-brands I've worked on before. But, you know, it's, uh, everything they use is at a little bit cheaper of a uh, quality. Every fuel line was so brittle, they were either cracked, they had no flex in them. I had to change all the vacuum lines, all the hoses. The intake boot right here, I can't even get it back in because it has no flex to it at all. Uh, the steering, the first time we tried riding it, you see here the steering shaft. Let's see right there. That's all, the only bushing in that, which is super cheap, is a cheap plastic collar. Um, and as soon as we rode it the first time, it just disintegrated. So that's the thing. The plastics, you know, they look good, um, but there's not a lot of play in it compared to like the Suzuki here, which even after 20 years, I think this thing's at 2003. Um, has a lot of more flex in it. I'm not saying you can't break those, and as a matter of fact, he, it was broken once, but it was a really hard impact with a tree that did. Um, this is a two-stroke. It is oil injected, although I like to mix my own gas because I don't trust oil injection. That's just me. Um, but these things have a lot of nice features for the price. And you know, when you're picking these things up, especially if they're used um, and not working, you know, people don't usually want to buy third, you know, third world country products. I would not say China is a third world country, but uh, off-brand uh, stuff. Um, everything is usually built a little bit cheaper, although they have really nice features. This thing has lights. It has a horn. It has electric start with a kickstart backup. Kickstart backups are great. No one does it anymore. Um, it has a disc brake in the back compared to drums on this thing. Um, so what we'll do is we'll have Chris take it for a quick ride, do a lap, and then take that for a lap. Now, the one thing about these, these quads, there is no neutral, there is no gear. It is a one-speed CV transmission. Um, and with that, it doesn't like to get over, it has very little torque. Once it gets going, it's a two-stroke, it rips pretty good. Let's see if he gets going here. Chris is 110 pounds and five foot five. It needs a barrel roller skates on it, but it moves pretty good with him on it. moves pretty good like it's no slouch um, you know but uh, the fit and finish the quality the CVT transmission when it moves it rips good it doesn't want to go over rocks doesn't want to go over boulders so you wouldn't want to do any kind of rock crawling this thing if you have a nice field or a backyard you want to have your kid learn in by all means go for this it's a great way to get your feet wet would I trust this thing like on a real trail or take it into the woods? Honestly not. Uh, although the drivetrains, the powertrains on all these aftermarket things are usually Honda clone engines, and they're usually pretty solid. So what Chris is gonna do now is go for a rip on the Suzuki Quad Runner uh, 160. This bike is also an inexpensive bike to buy used. Uh, I paid $900 for this for what, your 12th? Chris was when you were 12, I think, so yeah. three years ago, or maybe you were 11. Um, and we've had it, and this thing has been reliable as a hammer. It's been through hell. We've taken it everywhere. He rides it in the woods here with his friends all the time. I'm going to do a video on these bikes uh, pretty soon because I'm such a fan of this little Suzuki um, and how cheap you can get them. Uh, this bike is a five-speed uh, semi-auto, which means it has no clutch. But why don't you take it for a quick rip, Chris? And he will take that. See, as he clicks it in gear. And this bike is just tough. It's... You know, it's a heavier bike. It's not for as little of a kid, but you know. So, here's my synopsis. Would I buy one of these? If it was cheap enough. Um, I can't see people buying these new, um, the problem is the aftermarket port. These Etons seem a little better than most. 
Uh, you actually can find parts under Eton or when you search the name Eton. But when you start getting to the real, you know, who knows who made it brands, it's impossible to find parts for them or know if you're getting the right part. Um, so, you know, be wary before you buy one, look up the parts. Can you find parts for it? If you look up that model of quad, can you find stuff to buy for it? Or are you trying to figure things out um, as you go along? If you're not mechanically inclined, it's hard to find people to work on these uh, off-brand vehicles. Um, and, you know, if you're mechanically inclined, you might spend some time trying to figure out what works, what doesn't work. Uh, things are not as easy as just looking up a parts microfiche. If I need a petcock for the Suzuki Quad Runner, I go on to a Suzuki website or a reputable dealer, and I can look at a thing and say, oh, here's a petcock. Here's this part of my carburetor. Uh, here's this part. So you know you're going to get the right part. It's not as easy with these uh, third-party companies. Or not third-party, off-brand. Um, although the price of ownership is sometimes so cheap, they are a very attractive offer to buy. Um, Chris, all right. You own that one. You've ridden that one. Let's say you were a little smaller. What bike would you rather ride? Well, if I was smaller, probably. Yeah, I still probably would ride this one. Um, this one is it's fast, but it definitely could break easier than that one. The yeah. uh, Suzuki, but yeah. Yeah. As someone who has to fix the things the boy breaks, um, I want a name brand uh, just because I know I can get parts for it. Does Do things break? Yes. Um, everything breaks. You know, we've... The, the amount of things you've broken on your dirt bikes and your quads is, you know, substantial. You know, on those quads, he's, he's hit trees and broken A-arms and he's broken uh, steering parts. But when it's, a, when it's a name brand, it's easy to find the part you need. When you're looking at a 10-year-old off-brand vehicle, you know, if you're going to learn in the backyard, if you have a field and you just want your kid to learn what he's doing, see if he likes it. By all means, pay three dollars $400, get one of these things, make it work you'll get your money back when you sell it as long as it's in the same condition as when you bought it. All right. Thanks for uh, watching. Uh, if you want a video on the quad runner 160, let me know. Um, I love these things. Bye.